Hello, I'm live. It is the 15th of July 2023, it's Saturday. A rainy, stormy Saturday here. Wouldn't think it's summer. I'm reading out of um, Life as Carola. It's the life of Carola, who is a far memory of Joan Grant, who lived uh, until 1989. She was able to recall her past lives, and this is one of them. It plays in Italy, pre-Renaissance, and uh, Carola was the illegitimate daughter of <clears throat> Lord Griffin. She was banished from the castle with her daughter, with her mother. Her mother uh, dies. Uh, she has now uh, joined a convent. She's had quite a few adventures, and it will be described in my bit sheet when I upload it. I am in chapter 20, and it's the third part. Uh, this is in the convent, and this chapter is entitled Arraignment. I heard footsteps echoing along the passage, then the door opened to disclose the abyss. She carried a horn lant lantern, in its yellow glow her face seemed disembodied against the thick darkness. Behind her in the shadows stood the lame nun. The abyss spoke to me, her voice dead and toneless. I have come to hear your recantation. I stood up. I have not lied, so I have nothing to recant. You confess to the powers of a witch. Not witch, but priest. A witch's blasphemy. My body was weak and I had to steady myself against the wall, but I managed to keep my voice clear and level. You are powerful within the walls of this convent, just as the Pope is powerful within the boundaries of the estates. But in a time when priests within the bound, but when it, but in a time when priests were really men of God, and the light of heaven shone upon those who looked upwards to the source of truth, you would have been cast out of a temple as unworthy even to work in the gardens of the men and women who were the guardians of truth. You may have taken vows, but I see you stripped of your office. A barren woman cursed with ignorance and blind to light. To the other nun she said, you're right, she is under a satanic influence. I laughed at her. You seem to have forgotten that through Satan is now an angel of darkness. He is still an angel. Why should he try to extinguish the light where he knows none has been kindled? To believe that he has bewitched my tongue to beguile into evil your narrow community would be as if you believed that the King of France would bring an army into Italy to kill a spider. I have known that you were unworthy to wear our habit. In you I have seen all the evil and lust for power of the line of which you are a bastard, and none of its virtues. Even allowing that all the evil of the griffin has flowered in you, it's still impossible to believe that you, Carola, would have dared to address me as you have done had not a follower of Satan prompted you. I knew it to be my duty, not only as a bride of Christ, but as a pillar of God's most holy church to drive out this evil which has entered you. We shall cause it to suffer through your flesh. I have known demons take flight when they have felt hunger and thirst, but yours need stronger measures, for it is rooted in you like the poisonous weed that grows from a heretic's grave. She made the sign of the inverted cross against me, then her voice rang forth. I warn you, spirit that possess the body of Carola, depart to those nether hells from whence you came. Allow the spirit of this girl to speak, to swear denial of the evil knowledge with which you have endowed her. In the name of the Trinity, I bid you go, and if you stay in this envelope of flesh, then shall we teach you that the earth can hold more pain even than hell where burns the eternal fire. I mocked her. Oui. Battery. I mocked her. Why make speeches unto the lords of hell when I, Carola, am your only audience? You accuse me of being possessed of a devil, and I answer you that I am possessed. That if I am possessed, it is only by a ray of light which shines from the source of truth. I have said that I can leave my body when it sleeps and visit places I have never seen and bring back clear memory of them. I have said that sometimes in my dreams I talked with those who have been my friends and 
that they are not demons, nor great ghosts in purge, in purgatory, nor even angels, but they are as they were when clothed in flesh, though they are happier and clearer eyed. I have told you that there is no death because we die each time we go to sleep. I have told you that we were born on earth more than a thousand times. What more shall I tell you? That your long preserved virginity will not bring wisdom to you? That I have seen more godliness in a girl who earned her living in a brothel than you have dreamt of? That I have heard the wisdom of the gods not from a priest or nun or divine follower of his holiness but from a jester, a dwarf who once wore kind, knightly armour. If these things shall brand me heretic, then I'm proud to die for hearsay. I knew that I must be a shield, not a spear against her. I must be calm, dispassionate. I must drive hatred of her, of her from my heart, for hatred would forgive, would forge a chain between us, and with her I must make no bonds. She spoke again. If I were sure these blasphemies were uttered of your own will, that there was no devil whispering at your ear, I should know that it was useless further to mortify your flesh in a last attempt to save your immortal soul. But through the infinite mercy of the Church it has been decreed that even those who speak in the voice of devils, as you have spoken, or have listened to the serpent of evil, wisdom and gain from him a subtlety in sin, should be spared, nothing may save them from an eternity of hellfire. By all the means in our power, we shall seek to drive out the thing that possesses you, even though your flesh must mortify before the devil will release his tenement. I sent up a silent prayer to Petruccio to give me the strength to fulfill my promise to die if need be for what I knew to be true. I said, you said that I have blasphemed. Are you ignorant of your own thoughts? Listen to the voice of your heart and it will tell you that why you hate me is not because your godliness recognizes evil in me, but because your own faith has failed you. The God you worship is not a God of love, but cruel and arrogant, a mightier Pope, a God who delights to hear his praises sung to feed his pride, a God who denies all godliness in man, a God who has ensouled his puppet slaves so they would bow before him, heavy with the sin into which they were born of his own will. A God who is blind to justice, who made the world into this pattern. And yet condemned his own creation to be damned until he came among them as the Christ. You cross yourself like an, like an ignorant peasant passing a suicide's grave at a benighted crossroad. There was horror in the voice of the lame nun as she exclaimed, It is only the infinite mercy of God that has not allowed your evil words to strike you dead. Their awe of death made me more certain of my own strength. Death is no stranger to me, and many times I have rejoiced to hear his step approaching the door of the narrow prison of this world to set me free. Have you no memory of your own to show you that the things I say are true? Are you so shrouded in your ritual that you're deaf to your own inward voice, which must surely tell you of the many times you have died only to be reborn? The abyss seemed indifferent to my taunts, as if she were content to reserve revenge. She said, Secure in the light of perfect faith, I cannot hear you blasphemies. I cannot hear your blasphemy. The light of faith is, is like guttering corpse, lights blowing in the wind, poor flickering light that can but show the shell of death and cannot make the spirit luminous. I cannot draw upon the mighty wisdom of the gods, but my, of my own knowledge. I have certainty that there is justice. All men are fellow travellers through the mists of time. Time that is ten thousand times longer than your creed holds the creation of earth to be. Until, through the long cycle of their many births, each shall at last achieve a brotherhood with God. The last thing I remember seeing were the gold glittering eyes of the abyss and her dry puckered lips, colourless in the faded yellow skin that hardly moved when she spoke.